We're gonna pull out all this gravel in through here, or at least a majority of it. And I'm hoping that I can find some big pieces of slate to throw along the bottom and give it a much more clean look. Cruise right along. It's gonna be important that we set elevations correctly when working in this area. Set that bottom course right at the appropriate height in order to compensate for the thickness of the patio there. So we'll kind of have to reverse engineer our way down from the top of patio to figure out um, the thickness of our brick, how many courses we're gonna need, and then what the bottom horse elevation will be as well. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Good morning everyone, it's Chris from Team Aquascape. Today we have something a little bit different. We are going to be renovating our Bullfrog ecosystem pond directly behind me here inside the retail store. You've seen us do a couple of different things in here and we're gonna continue to give a facelift to our retail store through this off season. But today we're gonna tackle this sucker right behind me. So like I said, this is the ecosystem pond right here, the Bullfrog ecosystem pond. We are going to be renovating this water feature here. We're not gonna be completely gutting and rehabbing it. What we're gonna do is we are going to replace the skimmer with an intake based system. We'll tweak the waterfall up there just a little bit and then we are going to be taking out our old stack slate walls that are located over here supporting the patio and replacing that with architectural brick wall or unilock wall stone and we're going to change the shape of it and actually carve it back a little bit. We're going to redo this entire patio as well and just kind of go through spruce up all of the edges and redo some of the rock work. I want to redo the bottom down in here and maybe do more of a slate floor Floor, replace all the gravel that kind of stuff so we have our work cut out for us we are working here inside in the store which makes things always a little bit more challenging but first thing we got to do is move all the merchandise out of the way then get our tank set up start draining the pond and then carefully get these fish out of here and then we'll get into it after that putting the protective underlayment down. This is just that geotextile underlay that you see us use underneath our ponds. We're gonna use it to cover up the patio here. We've got all the decoys moved, some of the signage. We're gonna start pulling out some plants. And then at the same time, we'll start draining the water into these awesome collapsible tubs. These are a 500 gallon tank. Uh, we're gonna set up a couple of them in here. We'll put aerators in here, make sure to cover them up, but this is where the fish are gonna go. So it's a nice, quick, easy transition from here into here. So, but we just wanna do our due diligence. We're kind of working pretty tight in here. Now that Ed's Paladarium is up and running and is a permanent fixture in here, so that is not being moved. So get this thing starting to drain and then uh, get the fish out and then we'll start working our way in. is starting to drain as you saw a second ago we have an enormous amount of guppies in here that we will do our best to get a lot of them out of here some of them may not make it through the clean out and renovation but there are so many and they multiply like crazy in here but a lot of them will probably get sucked up into the pump and kicked into these two tanks regardless you see Roy has went ahead and set up the Pro Air 60s we've got a diffuser in each tank and we'll go ahead and turn those on once we start getting the fish in there I want to kind of really take the time to explain to you how we're going to transport these fish to and from the feature just to show you the handling and care techniques that we use when moving large fish from our in between ponds into a temporary holding tank or from a pond to a pond so just wanted to show you that all right so we've got Roy going ahead and stepping in the pond we've got it drained down to about 10 12 inches of water it shallows up definitely over here but what we're going to do is we're going to target the big fish first like I said there's a lot of guppies in there but we are going to go after the big koi you can see Roy has one of our sock nets in through here what that's going to do is that's going to not only get the fish in there but it will also get a bunch of water in there as well and what that'll do is that will maintain the equilibrium inside the body as well as outside the body and what that does is that'll keep the innards of the fish all in place and intact so we're going to transfer the fish and then what Jack will do is he'll just simply pull up on the handle and the fish will come out the back end super important that we do that and use this net on these big fish like I said in order to keep all their guts and everything inside the fish in place Place so they're not moving around because they're all in a solution inside their body. So you see Roy gently nudging that fish to go in and we're gonna repeat this process probably about a dozen times or so. See how he's got the two ends clasped, making sure that there's water inside of that sock net. There you go. I'm Jack and I'll work our way over here. We 
We also have a net over the top of this pond. This is some of our netting that we use. That's gonna prevent these fish from jumping up out of the tank while they're here in their temporary enclosure. Good job, Roy. Oh, we got some cichlid in there too? That's awesome. All right, so pond is drained, fish is out. Nice job, Roy. Great job, nice Jack. <laughs> nice work. Got the fish in our two holding tanks. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start pulling some of this pond apart. One thing that I wanna do is I wanna get rid of all of these small pieces of slate down in here, as well as a lot of this decorative gravel and change it out with some small stuff. While we're in here, we might as well take the opportunity to renovate it and kind of give it that facelift and add some more bells and whistles to it. Just get the whole thing nice and clean while we're tearing it apart. So it's better to go ahead and just do everything at once instead of trying to do it little by little each and every Every year as the time goes so we'll go ahead and get pull the pump get that slate out of the bottom then we'll start pulling apart that rock work pull apart this little wall here and start creating our intake bay So we've got some of this ripped apart over here. We had a stacked stone or a stacked slate wall running right up against that, so that's all gone. Now what the guys are doing is they're trying to get as much of this fake mulch out of here as we can. It's expensive, we wanna try and reuse it. We have more hands now. We have now Jack, Dan, and the rest of the team Aquascape up here just kind of prying up this patio, getting that area prepped and ready to go so that when we pull out these walls, we're gonna end up having to seam the liner over here to give ourselves some extra to really manipulate the shape back over here and make this pond bigger. I'm hoping that we do not have to move that rock right there. But if we do, it is what it is. So here are the two stack slate walls that I was talking about earlier in the video. They were providing circulation simply by bubbling up just above the surface, overflowing, and then pushing back across. So we are still going to keep the circulation jets over on this area, but these two walls are coming out, and then we are going to be putting in a brick wall back in here, kind of opposite curve of what's happening in order to make this pond a little bit bigger and create a little bit better of a viewing area, but also give us a foundation to lay that patio back on top of. So Dan and Jack are gonna start pulling all these apart in through here, and then we'll what we will do is we will pull that liner back, kind of see what we have to work with. Odds are, I think we're gonna have to see how short it is over here. We're gonna chew up a lot of this just by trying to make the pond bigger. So we have our work cut out for us here. It may take us some time, but it's worth it. And we'll really accentuate this backwater cove area of the pond. This is where that intake bay is gonna go. The opening where the old skimmer was, and when I say old, it's definitely not old, it's probably only about three years old, but we wanted to show a little bit more custom work on this pond. We saw we had the spillway bowl, we've got some stack slate in there, we've got a relatively large waterfall, the brick wall. Wanted to make kind of just a much more custom looking pond in here. So we're gonna do a skimmer on steroids in here and put an intake bay. So we need to go ahead and seam up or repair that hole where the opening for the skimmer was. So what we'll do is we'll clean up the face or the interior side, the pond side, of the skimmer, clean all that off, uh, get a, like a piece of plywood or something back behind it so that we can get that liner stretched nice and taut and flat, clean it, dry it, prime it, and then put some 12 inch cover tape over the top to seal up that hole. And then we'll do the exact same thing to the backside to have just a little bit extra insurance knowing that that's gonna be a watertight seal on that repair. And then the pump vault, the small aqua blocks, all that stuff will go in after that. Speaking of seams, we have another seam going on to add on to this existing pond liner. Because we are going to change the shape and dig this back and make the pond a little bit bigger and add a little bit more dimension to it, we end up having to add on to the existing pond liner. So very similarly to what's happening over there, we are going to be cleaning up this liner. So you can see the guys have a cut piece of plywood. They're gonna drape the liner all the way across. You guys that have watched our videos before have seen us do this, but we wanna make sure that this thing sits nice and taut. They'll go ahead and use a scour pad or a Scotch-Brite pad or something to get all of that existing scale off. And then 
we will get it clean, dry, primed it, and then our double-sided tape, which is the three-inch seam tape, by the time it's all said and done, it's about a five by 12 piece of liner that we're gonna add on to this. And then what we'll do is we'll put a piece of six-inch cover tape over the top of that, again, ensuring that it's a nice watertight seal. So, see the guys really getting in there, using that scour pad, getting all of that scale and build up off of there. We got a bucket of water that helps, and then we will go through and make sure it's clean and dry before we start to prime. Okay, so uh, we removed the skimmer. <laughs> we have an eight inch opening here that we're going to seam. We have the special 12 inch seam tape here, which is awesome because it'll allow us to put just one layer of it. When you remove the skimmer and you wanna seam the hole, you wanna do both sides. So we already did the one side of it, and now we're gonna do the other side and sandwich it together so you have basically three layers, and that'll ensure that you won't have any leak through the, the skimmer. So carefully get your seam tape. You wanna make sure you don't have any creases and slowly peel off the back and as you're going you just make sure that you're pushing it down evenly make sure you're covering all those holes and the complete opening of it and almost there almost there money and voila look at that and now basically have one single liner uh, where the hole is covered and you can... What skimmer? What skimmer, exactly. What skimmer? There's no skimmer here. <laughs> there you go, guys. Great job, Roy. You. you too, Garrett. So we've got the last bit of our seam wrapped up now, which is awesome because then we are going to take lunch and then work on that brick wall in here after lunch. And then the rest of us will refocus our energy on the intake bay area over there. Pump vaults, small aqua blocks, re-rocking that area in, reconfiguring the plumbing over here and then creating this area. We're gonna pull out all this gravel in through here, or at least a majority of it. And I'm hoping that I can find some big pieces of slate to throw along the bottom and give it a much more clean look. And then we'll get a lot of that big gravel out over and through there, as well as over here and do small grab. So cruise right along. It's gonna be important that we set elevations correctly when working in this area. Set that bottom course right at the appropriate height in order to compensate for the thickness of the patio there. So we'll kind of have to reverse engineer our way down from the top of patio to figure out um, the thickness of our brick, how many courses we're gonna need, and then what the bottom course elevation will be as well. So we have some work ahead of us in order to even get started on this wall, but it's important that we do that, as you see in a lot of our episodes, to do that due diligence before we really dive head first in and start making progress so we don't have to do any double work down the road. We've got the laser set up and what we did was is we came all the way over here with our transit stick which is sitting there and we checked the elevation of that piece right there that's the patio side of the bridge the peekaboo bridge here in the retail store that connects the stepper walkway that is led from some steps coming up into here we want to match the elevation of the patio with that step so that everything is a nice fluid level 
change onto that patio. So what the guys did was, is we figured out how many courses of wall stone that we're gonna need. These are four and a half inch blocks. So we've got four and a half, nine, 13 and a half, 18, and then 22 and a half inches of height. So when we shot that, we wanted to be two and a half inches down because of the thickness of our patio stone that will sit on top of this wall stone. And we gave ourselves a half inch of wiggle room. So we dropped the transit down 22 and a half inches plus another half, so 23 inches from the bottom of that stone. And that gave us our elevation or our depth over here that we need to have that base course set at. When these guys are prepping the area for the bricks to sit on, they know exactly what elevation that needs to be. So you can see they've got the little four foot level down there, kind of leveling everything off, getting some of that excess sand out of there. Then they'll pull the fabric and liner back and then they'll go ahead and start setting that base course. The reason we gave ourselves an extra half inch of wiggle room is so that when we foam that or if there's any in between courses, it may or get a little bit thicker and give us some additional height and elevation as we start building that wall. Or if some of these bricks happen to be a little uneven, we can fudge that as we go up. So I'd rather have half inch of wiggle room than be right at it and then have everything kind of sloping up to meet up with that wall. We could always shim underneath those patio stones to make it work. And then over here on this end of the pond, you got Roy, Steve, Seth, Grant, continuing to clean out that excess sand that kind of fell in. Then we're gonna lay the fabric down, then the liner, and then we're gonna go ahead and place our small aqua box, which we're sitting over here. We're gonna fit either four or five in here, plus our pump vault that will house our two pumps. And then we will probably, in order to keep that liner up high, probably bulkhead fitting in the back side of that liner to bring those pumps in through the back so we can get that liner up as high as we can, rather than bringing that pipe up over the top of the liner in order to bring the water level as close to the surface or as close to the seat wall as possible. going on DK here I've got Jack 1.0 Jack 2.0 aka JD we've had a great day today out here in the retail store reworking this entire big koi pond so what do we got going on here Jack I see that we've ripped out some walls we've kind of kicked this cove area back what's the game plan so where are we at our recap for the day is we're able to tear out those walls as you saw we're able to get our seam in and we started our unilock wall that's going to be this cold type look that we're shooting for for the patio so when you're looking out over this you're just going to have this nice big sweeping cold area in this area we're going to get a, this blue rock that's going to sit somewhere in this area we're going to set that tomorrow morning it's got a lot of fish to kind of swim and hang out in this area especially with those jets pushing all this water from in front of this wall all the fish are just going to love this area but back on track so we, we're getting our base wall finished and that we're gonna tomorrow we're, we're gonna be able to finish this wall and put everything up tomorrow but if you come over here this is where the majority of the fried press was today we got our skimmer on steroids done aka known as our intake bay so we're able to tear out our skimmer and we pulled that out and we patched that hole so we got three aqua blocks thing in front of this vault the reason why you guys might ask is why this vault is not down all the way in the aqua block and not up right to it and the reason is we're in our retail store and there's cement underneath this entire retail store so we can't go in and just jackhammer a hole in the ground to put this vault in the ground which is no big yeah. deal we're just gonna put the cobbles around it make sure it's all locked into place and then by the time we get some rock work in front of it you won't even tell so that was pretty much our wrap up for today and the retail store looked like a bomb went off but we cleaned it all up and everything's packed away for the night and then we back at it tomorrow morning guys so you know what to do like subscribe tell all your friends because we need more friends keep coming back and we'll yeah. see you guys on the next one